body business. I'm a physiotherapist. Um, how many of you have been to a physiotherapist over the years? In all the speaking that I do, that's usually about the amount. And how many of you were given exercises when you went to the physio? Good, about 95%. And how many of you stopped doing the exercises pretty much the minute the pain went away or when you lost a piece of paper in the car? Right? <laughs> that's kind of my life. Okay, because really, when we, when we heard so beautifully from Renata how hard it is to get you to meditate, well, try getting people to do something physical. It's even harder. The thing is, with bodies, I started a business called Physiosize where we got people with wobbly bodies and bad backs and we got them to come to classes. And we taught them about new habits that could help them actually start to change their bodies. And I think what we started to realise was that we could use their minds to change their bodies. But a big thing that's happened over the last 10 years as we've become increasingly sedentary is that we've kind of forgotten that our bodies can actually change our minds. I think Damon was talking about it last yesterday so beautifully, saying, you know, we've got to remember that there is a body. So basically, if you think back to Neanderthal man, they had these lovely, strong bodies. And those bodies were largely driven by pretty primitive reflexes, the flight, fright, reset, fight reflex, where you know, they knew that, that the body instinctively knew to run away from the saber-toothed tiger. And they had quite small brains, which were largely preoccupied with three main things. The first one was food. When I was drawing that, that was meant to be a deer, but it actually <laughs> looks like a killer rabbit, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> anyway, there you go, but you get it, like they were hunting, right? And then you had shelter food and shelter. And then the third really key one was sex. And they thought about sex a lot because they had to do a lot of sex in order to have the survival of the fittest. Now flick to this day and age. We've got these enormous prefrontal cortexes. We've seen these beautiful images of how big our brains are. But those brains are no longer filled with, you know, just killer rabbits and shelter. They're filled with families and friends and food, hopefully good food, and Facebook and work and money and because we want to go on lots of overseas holidays because unfortunately we're so stressed, uh, because we're trying to spend a lot of our money on buying stuff that we probably don't need and probably can't afford. So as a result, we've now got these very wobbly bodies and they really don't work very well at all. They're not nearly as strong as they used to be, right? And we now also don't think about sex terribly often. Um, and if you, if you talk to a lot of people about this, now this was an incredibly um, well done study by an eminent journal called The Woman's Day. Um, and they found that 85% of people, 85% uh, of women with young children when asked whether they would prefer a night of wild sex or a great night's sleep, chose sleep. <laughs> so, you know, you've now got this very, very big change in the way that we're thinking about our minds and bodies. In fact, I think we've actually forgotten that our bodies are actually very, very important to our thoughts. And I think Doctor Who's always fabulous in the zeitgeist on this. This is, you know, really, are we heading towards this thing where we're just basically brains and bottles and we're not actually using our bodies? So, what we do know from the... Ex from the research now is that in fact we can actually make huge differences to our mood through our bodies and there's four things that I've found over the years that if I, if I just said to you I want you to go out and I want you to start exercising you should be 30 minutes a day blah blah, blah and you're all going to go look I am so busy I can't even find my five minutes to meditate let alone take on a whole new exercise project unless of course you've got breakdown, if, unless there's a pain, which is what happens when people come to us, that they've actually decided they have to do something because of the motivation of the pain. But if there is no pain, the only thing we can do is try and link change to your moods because then you will remember that you can do something. So these are the four moods. The first one is your body can be a lifter upper. The next thing, it can be a calmer downer. It can also be a sharpener and it can be a soother. So let's look first at the lifter uppers. Now, if you're feeling flat and tired, which a lot of us are by this time in the day, what can we do? We could do two things. We could have a coffee and a muffin, which a lot of you have probably just done. And what that does is it lifts you up, but then it drops you down. And the trouble is you're going up and down and up and down during the day and not getting that good sustained energy. 
Now, the thing is that what starts to happen is that you embody that tiredness. So just slump down now. That's not very hard. Most of you are already there, right? Just, <laughs> just slump away, right? And now look at the person next to you and just find out how incredibly uninteresting they look, right? <laughs> Can you see? They're just really terrible, okay? Now, stay slumpy. Come on, I want a good slump. Sit on the edge of your chairs and give me a good slump, right? Right? And now try and smile. Try and smile at that person next to you, right? Can you see it's actually quite hard? Because your body actually finds it quite hard to be up when you're down, right? Now, I want you to sit on the edge of your chair again, and now I want you to lift up, and now I want you to look at the person next to you. Now, don't they look incredibly intelligent, <laughs> right? They look fabulous, all right? And now can you see how easy it is to smile at them? Look at you, right? And all those beautiful mirror neurons in our brains are going, oh, that person's so lovely, oh, I love that person, I feel so good, right? So to lift yourself up, you need to think about this. Just have a look at this clip. This is from the slumpy kids. Hello, hello. <laughs> this is from the slumpy, slumping away. This is from the slumpy kids series. Have a look at this. No, 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 no. The video. Yes. <laughs> And it needs sound. Years dealing with unhappy bodies. Along the way, I've discovered a secret to improve well-being and sustain a healthier life. To feel differently, you need to think differently, and that's what a happy body is all about. Now, the last thing we're going to do in sitting is this thing that I call Mr. Slumpy Face. Over the years. Even though I know we can see the kids in that banana back position, the kids can't see themselves there. And so I started to realise actually the problem was I needed to get them to realise how they looked. So I came up with this a few years ago and it works a treat. Once you've done it on a child and they see themselves, they will laugh but they'll also really remember it. And all you need to say to them is, Mr Slumpy Face, and up they come. So let me show you what it looks like. If Tom takes his shirt off, will show you just how cute this looks. And once they've done it, they really will have such a giggle about it that it's really easy to keep reminding them. Now, all you need to do is you need to get a whiteboard marker. Don't use a permanent marker, I've done that before. And you just draw a little face on their tummy. Do a little eye and a little nose and a little mouth and two eyebrows. And when Tom slumps, you'll see he gets a slumpy face. And when he lifts up, you'll see his face all looks nice and surprised. So all you need to say to him when he's down is, slumpy face, Tom, and he'll lift up and open it up. And it's just such a cute way that you can actually get them thinking about what's happening when they slump down. And remember, in here is their whole intestinal system. So no wonder so many of these kids they're slumped down for hours, they're eating, they're not exercising enough, and there's just not enough space for digestion. So you'll often get a lot of gut problems related to their posture, as well as the neck and back problems that I see all the time in my clinic. So that's Mr Slumpy Face. So slump down, and just imagine you've got a slumpy face on your tummy. It doesn't work so well on a hairy stomach, I can tell you that now, okay? And now lift up and lift your slumpy face and smile at the person next to you. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. So that's the first thing. Now, the other thing we know that is if you get off your bottom, it makes a huge difference. Because the more we sit, the more our blood glucose levels drop and the more we will tend to crave sugar. So sedentary lifestyle is now really related to sugar cravings. And we will also tend to um, take on a lot of visceral fat. So we need to get off our bottom and we also need to get outside. There's a lot of studies showing if you move around near water and green space, your mood is really, really elevated. The other thing is, if you get a dog, it's fabulous. Because what happens is it can be raining, it can be awful, and those little eyes looking at you going, please, can we go outside, please, please, please? And so you will have the motivation to actually get going. So, Mr Slumpy Face is our first thing. The next thing is we know that exercise can be a calmer downer. Now, I'll what 
we can use as calmer down is, is one glass of red wine, or you could use two glasses of red wine, or a third glass of red wine. At this point, you certainly are very calm, but you will wake at three o'clock in the morning feeling pretty awful, and you wake up the next morning looking like this. So red wine is one option, movement is another. And there's now a huge body of research looking at how stressing your body physically can actually teach your brain about stress. They've done these really cool studies with rats. They're always doing their own rats. They took one group of rats that were kind of hanging around the cage like this, and then they took the other group and they gave them these really lovely little treadmills and they got them to exercise for six weeks. At the end of the six weeks, they took them and they stressed them. Now, the way you stress rats is you get them to swim across a cold pool of water, which would stress me too. And then they looked at all their biomarkers, and what they found is that the exercising rats coped much better with stress than the non-exercising rats. So it's as if the exercise that the, you know if ever you've done a whole stack of exercise and you're, <laughs> you're like this and you think you're gonna die, right? But you don't, right? <laughs> See, what they think is that that's your brain, the same response as a panic attack. Your heart rate increases, you start sweating, you feel incredibly uncomfortable, and then you don't die. And your brain goes, oh, that's stress, I get that. Maybe then when I feel this other kind of stress, this emotional stress, I won't be as scared about it. And so it seems to make a really big difference in creating this metaphor. The thing is the exercise needs to be tough enough to make you huff and puff. So stand up for me, okay? And I want you to stand up and what we're going to do is it needs to be tough enough to take you into moderate to vigorous exercise, which means that you need to be able to talk but you can't sing, all right? Now, what we're going to do, we're all going to march on the spot, swinging our arms. And as we do it, we're going to sing, row, row, row your boat. I'm a terrible singer, so you're going to have to sing with me. Now, just before you do, I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to think of something that really stressed you this week, something that was just driving you mad. And I want you to think out of 10, 10 out of 10 is the worst you could feel, and zero out of 10 is nothing. And I want you to give that, that stress a rating or an anger, some sort of fierce emotion. Now open your eyes and we're going to start doing row, row, row your boat. Are you ready? Row, row, row your boat, gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Faster, row, row, row your boat, gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Bigger, row, row, row your boat, gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Go, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Stop and talk to someone, quick. <laughs> very good, very good. Now sit down. Can you feel your hearts racing? Okay, now what I want you to do is when you talked, I now want you to close your eyes and I want you to think of that very stressful thing that you were just thinking of. And I want you to see, give it a number out of 10 now. And hopefully that number's really changed because all of a sudden your body's gone, oh, that old thing, right? And the beautiful thing with exercise is what it can do is it helps wipe your brain. And so it helps you actually start to realize that, you know, when you go for a, a, a really good walk, you've got something really stressful going on, you take your body and you get your brain, which is full with all this stuff, you take your body, you fill it with the thought of whatever you're doing, and it might be a complicated Ashtanga yoga or something like that, and you'll find it actually clears your mind, which is just beautiful. So now let's look at sharpeners. So we know it can lift you up with Mr. Slumpy Face. You can sing, row, row, row your boat wherever you go. You now, if... Um, with sharpeners, what we know is that a lot of people now are using a lot of cryptic crosswords and bridge and various things to actually improve the sharpness of their brain. But what we also know now is that a lot of physical activity, especially in kids, bilateral movements, can really make a difference. Those of you who saw Todd Sampson's show will know he did this great juggling, right, which you could see really improved his brain's cognitive task functioning. Also, if you decide to use, um, learn to play a musical instrument or something like that, it will also really change your brain. And we know in dementia that physical exercise is a disease-modifying treatment of dementia, which is just the most fantastic news. 
So if we've got those things, the last thing is soothing. And if you think about soothing, what is one of the things that we will do if we are anxious with our bodies? What do you do with a child? You rock them, right? Rocking is the most beautiful thing. I know sometimes if I'm very stressed, I want to sit in a corner going like this, <laughs> right? But, okay, but that gentle rocking is just lovely. And so that's why, you know, rocking chairs were invented, really. It's a very soothing thing on your body. So if you're thinking about trying to soothe yourself with your meditation, often because of our monkey brains, it's very hard for us to just let our bodies settle. So if you close your eyes now and you take two slow, deep breaths, as you're doing that, breathing in and out and open your eyes, you'll find that your body's, your brain's immediately trying to kind of come to terms with, with what's happening in order to calm down. Now stand up for me. And now we're going to use our body to get that beautiful rhythm. So now if you think about Tai Chi or yoga, just put your legs a little bit apart, bend your knees. And now I want you to imagine, just put your hands out in front of you. And now we're going to breathe, but we're going to move as we breathe. So I want you to breathe in, take your arms slowly up. And then as you come down, imagine that your hands are running down a wet pane of glass. Breathe in, it's like balloons are coming up, lifting you up. And then breathe out. And breathe in, focus on the movement of your arms. And then breathe out and then release. And all of a sudden, it wasn't so hard to clear your brain. Could you feel that? Because your body, have a seat, because your body was doing something, you could actually help to focus your brain. And that's you know, the miracle of so many ancient wisdoms is that they kind of figured out a lot of stuff that helped us and then we, we sort of forget. So if you think now, Today, you can think, you don't have to start some radical new exercise program. You just have to think to yourself, I'm a bit flat. I'll just lift my slumpy face. Or I'm actually a little bit stressed. I'm going to go out, I'm going to walk some stairs, I'm going to go up a hill and I'm going to walk pretty fast. And that immediately is going to help clear your brain and make you feel less anxious. If you're feeling a bit flat, maybe <laughs> you feel like, boy, I'm getting older and, you know, suddenly trying to think of things. I know I have these sort of moments all the time where I think there's a lot of dementia in my family. And, and I think, well, actually, learning a new skill, challenging yourself, what we heard this morning about potential, thinking about new ways to expand your repertoire in your brain is actually really, really great, not only for your body but for your mind. And finally, there's soothers. So if you think about soothers... You know, if you really feel that you do want that, the other thing that's really nice for soothers is the same rhythmic activity. Swimming is a beautiful soother. Breath and body rhythmically. So if you want to know more about these, the Slumpy Kids DVD is what Mr Slumpy Face is from and Better Backs is, about, is the adult version. We've also got a lot of stuff for 40s and 50s, 60s and 70s. So if you want to know about exercise, it's good even though you've got dodgy knees and a bad shoulder and a bad back. That's all in there. And also, if you just want to read, there's the Feel Good Body book. And we're there appearing till today. Thank you very, very much to the Institute for having me. And thanks.